Hello everyone and welcome back. This is my guide to Act 8. We start Act 8 in the ramparts in this area. We just run all the way across the wall until we find a turn and then we carry on upwards. Just follow this wall around until you find an exit point. I'm just shoot across the top here. I'm using shield charge as my movement skill with the backup of flame dash to get over obstacles. I do highly recommend that you pick a movement skill that can jump over ledges. As soon as you get into Act 8 in the town, we're going to run down this little pathway here into the sewers or the toxic conduits. And in here we can choose any way we want. I'm going to choose right. And you're basically just trying to move away from the beginning. It's very easy to loop back on yourself here. You want to try and avoid that wherever possible. Okay, once you find the exit to this place, we just run through it into Doge's cesspool. And again, we're just trying to navigate the sewers. What we want to do is only kill blues if we can help it. No it and that's looping us back. We don't want to do that. We always want to be heading away from the starting point. Now in here, you'll find like a horseshoe shape. That means you're on the right track when you're there. Just be aware in this area, when you kill things, they can create toxic grounds, which will hurt you. Okay, this is a horseshoe. And this is our first boss of the area, and she's truly, truly horrible. There are sort of three different phases to this boss fight, and they're controlled by the valve on the side of the cauldron. Each time you turn this, you'll get a different phase at random. If you're playing a character that can leech, then I suggest you go for the one that has minions. This is the green one, and is the least dangerous of the three. The other two are exploded red balls, and the other one is massive chaos on the floor. Throughout the fight, the boss has two main attacks. One, she teleports on top of you, doing massive damage and probably one-shotting you. And then the other, she throws exploding things at you. These don't normally kill you outright, but a couple of them will. Now at the waypoint, we're going to go left first and grab this crafting recipe if it's our first run through, and then we go right. Just find our way to the exit on the right. In this area, we basically want to go to the bottom of the map and keep going across to try and find the Ankh of Eternity. It's either across the bottom or it'll be up the right here somewhere. It's always in the sealed casket. Grab it. And then we move on. Then heads upwards here and then travel across the boats to the right. This area isn't fixed, but there's always a general path. I'm just going to go right head downwards and we're looking for a section where there's a wall separating the two areas with a little passage to pass at the bottom. That's what I mean by the little wall with the passage. And then in to fight Zombie Tolman. Talk to Clarissa. A load of zombies will spawn in here during this fight until Tolman becomes free. When he becomes free, you want to switch to him and watch the floor for a red circle. That red circle is lethal and does a lot of damage. Shouldn't really affect this character so much because I've got quite a lot of health. Okay, he's free. Watch out for the red circle. Oh, that was quick. He's dead. How could I have been so stupid? How could I have been so stupid? Yeah, that never gets old. And then exit. Now head back upwards. And up here somewhere will be the exit. Finding this next part tends to be the hardest part. And there's the exit. To the grain gate. In the grain gate, grab the waypoint. And what you're going to do is run around this area looking for doorways. Where there is a dead body, like right there, this is the door we want to go in. Once in these areas, find the exit. And basically rinse and repeat all the way to the end. There's no body there. And again, another body near the door. There are these bosses in here. You do want to kill them if you want a quest reward. And again, another dead body. And the exit. In the Imperial Fields now, this is probably the easiest area in the whole of Act 8. In here, we want to run down this road until we find the waypoint. Once we find the waypoint, grab it and go left off the path. And we keep going in a straight line until we find the exit. In Slower's Temple, down the stairs. And in here, it's basically a mirror of Slower's Temple in Act 3. Except for not the cockroach lady not being at the end. Now, if you do get to the exit doors, be finding this. Drop a portal at the exit doors and go through. 
I'll tell you what to do once I finish this lower area. In this area, just run right down here till you get to the end, and then towards the right there'll be an exit. In level 2 of the area, we just continue round, trying to find the place where Not A Cockroach Lady would be. And by Not A Cockroach Lady, I mean Lady Dahlia, of course. Now, just like in the last area, once you find torches along the road, this is your area. And at the end, we go through the little portal. And in here, we kill the Harbinger of Solaris. We've been killed by his beam. And once he's dead, pick up the Sun Orb. There's also a crafting recipe in here somewhere, I believe. Oh, no, there it is. And then we log out. This is our first bit back in town. There's loads of quests to pick up. We're going to talk to this lady here. My courageous Gives well. a skill book. Talk to Hagen. He will give us a ring. And then we go and talk to Clarissa. And for a change, rather than giving us a suit key, she'll give us a skill book. Find the skill books. And then we'll carry on. To carry on, go to the waypoint and jump back up to Solara's temple. In here, what we want to do is turn left. Carry on this road down until you get to the stairs out of the area. To Solara's concourse. In Solaris Concourse, we need to run out of here and find the waypoints. This will tend to be down and slightly to the right. Once you find the waypoint, go and grab it, because your exit will be just down from it. And the exit's here. In the Harbour Bridge, we're just going to run straight through, killing anything that's blue. This is fairly straightforward. Once you pass this middle point, it will turn from a sunny map to a dark map to show that it's sun and moon. And the monsters turn from doing fire damage to cold damage in this section. Now beware rares in this area, they will insta-freeze you and perma-freeze you till you die, so make sure you have either an anti-freeze flask or some way of mitigating cold. And then get to the exit and leave. We're now on the Nara's Concourse, and this is exactly the same as the level 3 area, with one minor difference towards the end. Grab the waypoint and head straight up. Now in here, where we normally find Gravisius, we now find Gravisius' little brother. Who is a complete and utter pushover, and just pretty much drops dead. You would have thought, being the highest area, this would have Gravisius and the other one would have had him, but what do I know? Enter Lenora's Temple, level 1. And in here, we're just going to shoot through all these little doorways which are in a straight line until we reach the bottom here, whether to turn off the carpet marks your exit. That's where we normally find the boss that I leave in Act 3 and just continue through. And somewhere down here you'll find the waypoint. And then down the stairs to Lenara's Temple, level 2. Well that was easy, that's a dead end. Always go down first. Unless you can't. Like Act 3, there are a lot of people who do physical damage in here. They are quite nasty. And again, we're looking for slopes out of the area. Once we reach the top of the stairs with the carts, we want to go the way that doesn't have a cart or has the least number of carts. Immediately at the top of the stairs. And then ahead to the double doors and pass through. And then, you guessed it, we're going to find the next set of double doors. I used to have a theory in this area that you want to go for doors that are all open, but this was disproved when I got to an area where you couldn't possibly proceed without opening the door. However, in this case, it is open doors all the way. At the top of the stairs, we are not going to fight Piety. You'll be glad to know. We are going to fight Moon or Daughter of Moon, or whatever she's called. Harbinger of Lunaris. Now, she hurts with her one... We killed her. Grab the moon, and then log out. Go back to Lunaris Concourse. In here, we go and fight the gods, so we come down here, and as soon as you get down to the bottom of those stairs, take a left, or down, and we'll enter the bathhouse. Now, in here, if you haven't got all the trials of sentences in this area, there is one. You can actually see it right there. I've already got it, so I'm not going to get it. Now, there's also a waypoint in this area. You do not need to get it. All we're looking for is the garden exit. 
which will normally be towards the bottom of the arena, or the top of the arena in this case. There we go. Now this area can be particularly nasty because it's got lots and lots of porcupines in it who will explode and one-shot you unless you've got a way of mitigating it. I have died so many times to porcupines in this area, it isn't funny. Immortal Call will help, as will anything that freezes the enemy or destroys their corpses. I don't have anything like that in this case, except for these minions that will hopefully get in the way of me and those porcupine beams. In here, we're just going to follow the road around, staying on the bottom layer until we find the exit. Once we find the exit, head upwards and in. This area used to kill me so many times, this boss is particularly nasty, so we're going to hit him until he disappears into the ground. When he starts to charge at you, just get out of his way. And these balls will start coming out and they do a lot of damage. Halfway through the fight, or once you've taken his health down sufficiently, there'll be a load of weaker versions of him. Kill these and then he will pop back up. And again, watch out for the balls. You can normally tell he's about to charge you because he'll sort of his mouth will glow. And he's gone underground again, and we'll get another round of those extra minions. There you go, he's blown. That's when he... Now he will take mass... He will do massive damage to you if he hits you well in that phase. I've lost all my minions. That's problematic. Let's get them back. And he's down. He is a god, so if you want his god power, which in this case is minions take 25% reduced flip damage, then grab it here. And then we log. Once we get back into the game, talk to Hagen, and you'll get a skill book for killing Yugo. Go to the waypoint, and then we're going to jump back to Lanara's Concourse. Go straight down, back towards the Sun and Moon place. Is it Harbour Bridge? Yep. And in here we want to head all the way back to the middle where there's that little tower that separates Moon from Sun. Once we get here, go into the Sky Shrine. And then touch this little button here. And then kill these guys. This fight can be rather nasty. You'll switch between the two fights as one goes down. Now the fire guy shoots a beam out in all directions, which, uh, and then you'll get Moon who drops those big blocks on your head. Burn. Must have time to gather. The other thing Fire will do is fire that big beam out in front of him, and she's coming back, and he's down. So now we've just got to deal with her, who's she normally throws out balls or and they're down. Here you get the final two pantheons of Sin, and I normally switch to Solar Lanaris for defences. We then head out to the Blood Aqueduct. This is technically classed as Act 9. Now that we're here, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.